Welcome on God's Peace to you. I'm Pastor Zachariah Shippen. And I'm Pastor Emily Shipman. We serve the Northwest United Lutheran Parish in the towns of Crosby, Ambrose, Alamo, and Wild Rose, North Dakota. It is our prayer as you watch this video that you would hear God's word for your life today and that your faith in God will grow. May you come to know God's love for you more and more each day. The Holy Gospel according to John. Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The Gospel of our Lord. I invite you to be seated and I invite our wiggly kids to come forward for the children's message. Come on up. Welcome to sit. Welcome, welcome. How's everybody doing today? Good. Ooh, I might have to get out of the way. Wow. Come on up. You don't have to come. Okay. This is great. Fit in there? Yeah? Good job. All right, Wendy, at a certain help, at a certain point, I'm going to need your help with something. Grabbing something for me. You know what it is? Yeah, you got it? All right. Welcome. How are you all doing today? Good. This is fantastic. I barely have room to sit. It's good to see you all. Happy Sunday. Thank you. So today I want to talk to you about something called sin. Do we know what that is? Yeah, what is it? Doing something bad? Against God? Uh-huh. Anything else we want to throw out there? Those, those are good answers. Yeah? What do you want to say? Oh, Monday your boot got muddy and something about a horse, huh? All right. But you survived, chill, huh? Yeah? That's good. Did you clean your boot? Yeah, is it clean? <laughs> All right. So, yeah, you guys are right. So sin is stuff that, bad stuff that we do. And sometimes when we do bad stuff, it really weighs on us, right? Like, do you ever feel guilty about something you did and feel really bad? And that doesn't feel good, does it? You regret things? Regret is a big word. Yeah, it's, regrets are hard. So we have to ask forgiveness, right? You guys know all about all this stuff, don't you? Maybe you guys should, should preach up here and I should go sit down, huh? You want to do that? No? You don't want to preach, huh, Livy? All right. Well, so sometimes, so when we do bad things, we start to feel stuck, right? Did you want to say something? You forgot? That's okay. I forget sometimes, too. So, like just now, now I forgot where I was going. So when we do bad things, we get weighed down. How many of you have ever been sat on by a big sibling and felt stuck like you couldn't move? Yeah, I had two big brothers, one's very big, and, uh, and when they sat on me, I could not move. I was just so stuck. Or sometimes, did you ever have a sibling that went like this to your forehead? Hey, Gio, stand up for a sec, would you? Stand up. Did you ever have a sibling that went like this and you couldn't move? Can you try to come toward me? Come on, run at me, Gio, come on, run at me. 
Run at me. See, you're kind of stuck, right? Do you guys have a sit? You can sit back down now. Thanks, you're a good sport. Your brother does that? Both? Allie and Sierra both do that to you, huh? That is rough. How about you? Josia does it? Oh, boy. Oh, and you admit to it, huh? Good. Confession is good. That's good. All right. Well, well, I have another illustration. So, Wendy, if you'd help me out here. Sometimes, okay, your hair might get a little messy. All right. We're going to, we have so many kids, we're going to do this in multiple stages. So, we're going to talk about it with this, this group first. So, what I have here, it's actually a blanket that Pastor Zach made. He's a pretty handy crocheter. But so sometimes, we're going to pretend it's a net. So sometimes, sometimes we do bad things and they weigh on us like a net and then we're stuck, right? Are you stuck? I think you're stuck too. And then you can't really do anything, right? What? You can do it. Can you? Okay, shh. Oh, it's scary. I'm sorry. We'll let you out. So when we're stuck, can you brush your teeth in there? No. Can you eat? How about tie your shoes? Yeah, sometimes tying our shoes is hard even when we're not in a net, right? You can tie them? Good job. Good job. All right, how about this side? Do you guys ever get stuck? Can, can we get you stuck? Anybody have a fear of, like, bright blue blankets? All right. You cannot escape. Get in here. There you go. What do you think? Are you stuck? Yeah? Are you guys stuck? Oh, everybody's stuck. So what do you think? It's cool underneath here. Can you, can you hug your mom and dad when you're stuck? All right, one more, one more. Brittany, you are not, you are not free over here. You can put your hands up if you don't want to get your hair messed up. Where'd you go? There you are. Ah! <laughs> All right. So, thanks. All right. You guys all look great. Good job. You're good sports. So, when we admit that we did stuff wrong, God forgives us. And when we apologize to people, what's that? The net goes off. Yeah. So, when we feel burden and we feel this big weight, and then we admit that we've done something wrong, then it lifts that burden and we're able to stand again. We're able to do the good things that we're called to do again. Do you have a question? If you're playing a game and you're guilty, well, then some, for some people it's not a game though. So, so if we hurt someone while we're playing, we still want to apologize, right? Or if we do something wrong, figure out who's hiding in a toy behind their back, then you, well, we don't want to cheat, but when we, when we play and follow the rules, then we didn't do anything wrong, right? Yep. So, yeah, we don't want to cheat, and we don't want to take things from people, or all these things are bad things that we're not supposed to do, right? Oh, that's not very nice. But we want to confess the things that we do wrong, right? Yeah, so can we, can we pray about this? Can we put our hands together? Remember, Jesus loves me. All right, let's pray. Good and gracious God, we thank you for the forgiveness that you give to us when we admit to what we have done wrong. We pray that you help us to do good things. Uh, we thank you that you love us no matter what, even when we do bad things, and that you always always love us and forgive us. We pray for all those who don't know your love. We pray that they come to know your love too. And all God's people said, Amen. All right, we'll do that one more time because I think that was new for us. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Good job. All right. And now what we're going to do, you're all welcome to return to your seats. I remind you of your baptisms. We'll do that in place of high fives today, okay? Remember your baptism. Remember your baptism. You too, Brittany. Yeah.
I didn't throw it at you. There you go. There you go. There you go. God loves you. It's raining. I did get you wet, didn't I, Harper? <laughs> Someone lost a headband. Anyone who want to claim a headband? It's right here. Is that because I got her wet? No? Okay. Oh, it's a little one. I invite you all, is that yours? Go ahead, go ahead. I invite you all to, in, to remind each other of your baptisms. It is important to remember that God matters at all times, not just Sunday mornings. Uh, so in your creative ways, in your own time, I invite you to remind each other that you are beloved by God and your baptism makes a difference. Ha, ha, ha. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. Galatians 5, chapter 1. I remember being tiny and craw crawling through culverts with my brother. Has anybody else done this? Yeah? He mentioned feeling a little bit claustrophobic, and I remember wondering what that must feel like. Now I know it all too well. Claustrophobia is incapacitating. It feels like invisible hands are clenching at your throat, while it also swells from the inside, and it takes all your strength to suck in a little bit of air. Sometimes I see it coming, and no matter how much I try to keep a level head and talk myself through it, still it creeps in. That feeling of suffocation, of walls closing in, inability to move, stuck, helpless, even thinking about it or speaking about it, my throat seems to swell. Anyone else? Some of us? I apologize if just talking about that caused you a bit of anxiety. We will move on. There are many forms of being trapped, enslaved, stuck, feet in tar, quicksand, tangled in a net or a blanket, sat on or stiff-armed by an older sibling. Any of these images can depict our relationship to sin and how it wreaks havoc in our lives. In our gospel text today, Jesus speaks of being trapped in sin, stuck in it as slaves. How many of us in this sanctuary could reply like those in the text and say, we have never been slaves to anyone? And yet, Jesus points out a kind of slavery that pertains to all of humanity, sin. The slavery of sin and the reality of sin's impact in our lives. Sin weighs us down. The burden of knowing you've done something wrong, feeling crummy or guilty, disgusted with your own actions. The guilt of things we've done wrong and the guilt of actions we should have taken but failed to do. How can we make up for this? How do you undo something terrible that you've done? What do you do for the one who can do anything? God, because ultimately God is the one whom we sin against. How do you pay back the one who has everything? In short, you don't. You can't. There is nothing we could possibly do that would make us right with God. And all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God the goodness that God calls us to. No one is immune. All have fallen short. And so the walls press in. What are we to do? 
In this state, God intervenes. While we struggle covered with the burden of guilt, God in Christ reveals God's great love and offers undeserved forgiveness. God offers grace. In contrast to the slavery, the suffocating, limiting pressure and consequences of sin, in contrast to this is freedom. And according to Jesus Christ, the bridge between being enslaved to sin and liberated to freedom is truth. Christ's truth frees us from our sin. This truth divides us from our sin and guilt. This truth pries us loose from the burden of sin and frees us to walk again. This truth enables us to breathe again, move again. And what is the truth? How do we know the truth? The truth is known in continuing in Christ's word and being true disciples. To continue in Christ's word is to follow what he said, to live out the truths he revealed about God through the way he lived and how he interpreted scripture. How we interpret scripture matters. The Bible is a big book, and you can pluck verses out and make them say whatever you want them to say. But this is not being faithful to Christ. Continuing in Christ's word involves a relationship with God as Christ revealed God to be. A God of love, with whom we are called to have a close relationship. A God who cares for the least and advocates for the oppressed. A God who forgives fully and welcomes all and stands up against injustice. These are truths about God. The greatest truth revealed in God's love poured out for you and for all people. This truth is shown in God's Son, Jesus Christ, who lived love truthfully and advocated for the least. And because of pride and judgment and sin, others dis disagreed with the radical love Christ showed and threatened to kill Christ because of it. But Christ was faithful and unwavering in his love in showing the truth of God's love. And so Christ continued to profess and live out the truth of God's love, despite threats. And Christ died because of God's great love for all and the sin that opposed this love. But God rose Christ from the dead, showing that even death itself cannot separate us from the truth. Even death cannot separate us from God's love. These truths are revealed in Scripture, the truth of God's presence and activity in humanity, the truth of God's unending and unfailing love, the truth that from the beginning God had a plan for salvation for the world, and daily God continues to bring about healing and wholeness. Daily, God works toward redemption and reconciliation. Daily, God works toward healing and uniting the broken. We mark these truths in a number of ways today. Today, we lift up the truth of God's promise given in baptism. The promise of God's presence and God's love, which is communicated to us through the baptismal font. We lift up this truth and promise as our 10th graders affirm their baptisms and are confirmed into faith. We also celebrate the truth revealed in scripture and are calling to both embrace scripture and share it as our third graders are given Bibles. Today is also Reformation Sunday, marking the 499th anniversary of the church's struggle to seek after truth and discard the extra stuff we get wrapped up in. Always, we are a church that seeks after the truth, works toward forming ourselves again and again, striving to cling to the truth. In all these ways, we embrace God's truth, and we are called to the truth day in and day out. Living faithfully in response to these truths is what makes us true disciples. This is what God in Christ frees us for. 
The purpose of our freedom is to live as true disciples, to be freed from the weight of sin so that, so that we may serve. Confessing your sin, you are invited to receive God's forgiveness. Christ offers to break the nets or blankets, the walls pressing in to free you from the weights and allow you to stand again. Christ frees you to walk again, to love again, to serve again. It is only in this, in loving and in serving others, that we remain free. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. Rather, let us embrace freedom in Christ. For we are freed from sin and death, and freed for service to God and to neighbor. This is our freedom. Thanks be to God. Amen. We would love to have you join us sometime for worship. Here is our parish worship schedule and our contact information. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.